I just want to do a video on our ice cream bean trees. We have four different types. This is Inga Vera, and this tree has been blooming for three years. Two, this was the third year it started blooming. And it kind of blooms continuously, and we have not, this tree has not produced any fruit. But I know from other Ingas I've planted that they have to get a certain size, the ones that I know of, before they start producing fruit. And this tree is of size, finally. So here's, this has some flower buds starting on it. I guess not there, but I thought there was. I don't see any at the moment, but it's a... Uh, I like some of the ice cream beans. I've tasted them. Some are like... Uh, really small and don't have much flesh, but I planted one in Brevard, North, uh, southern Brevard County that produces fruit after about, I don't know, six years it started producing fruit. And it's a Puilia, I guess. And the fruit's very good on that. So I think it's worth growing just for fruit resale. Seeds, definitely. Um, and people uh, like it because it's they think it fixes nitrogen and i've been watching uh green cover seed on youtube i guess it's on facebook also uh the dr christine jones uh webinars and all the stuff that i've been ranting about on the tropical fruit forum under frog valley farm and on this, it's finally being explained by her why it works. So it's not really the tree that fixes nitrogen, it's the bacteria and archaea in the sociobiome. It's the soil, the leaves, the air probably, because it moves, and, um, well, for sure, and, uh, that's what fixes nitrogen and all trees all plants all plants form a symbiotic relationship with the nitrogen fixing bacteria and archaea so you don't need to focus on one group of trees like or one just nitrogen fixers i i have seen people this is a flower bud i've seen people uh plant peanut perennial peanut as a monocrop and what she's saying is that actually damages the system the monocrop you need at least four different distinct plant groups in your orchard floor dicots monocots meaning grasses and herbs perennials and annuals and just a, the more you can do the better because diversity equals intelligence for all life so the diversity in the soil is a living system that promotes and generates life above ground I'm just fascinated by her recent lectures. They just like, I feel vindicated of all the stuff I've been talking about, about the multiple species in the, the orchard floor being important. And in Florida, you don't even have to plant them. I didn't anyway, they just show up. I'm sure we have more than 40 different species in our orchard floor easily. Not all at once, but throughout the year. Because they show up at different times, some of them. Some of them show up in different areas. <clears throat> but uh, she's saying that the bacteria can feed directly to the tree nitrogen from the air. This is, you know, the air is like 70% nitrogen. So it's the most ready, readily available nutrient. And it's the biology that 
uh, processes it into a plant available form and the fungi feed it in the form of amino acids to the tree and she's saying if you add nitrogen synthetic nitrogen of more than I think 50 pounds per acre I guess that's a year it severely damages the system and she's also saying manure you I meaning you're not going to get soil aggregation which so the soil aggregation is proof that your biological system is working oh, i can't wait to start eating mangoes they're getting big some of them We got a lot, a lot of mangoes. More, many mangoes. That one's not gonna make it. Uh, uh, I love mang Azil's mangoes. Love them. Anyway, so the second ice cream bean we have, it looks like an Inga fuil fuilii, fuili. Anyway, sorry for the ignorance on my part on the pronunciation, but. It's a it's a big tree also, but it's uh, has been only been in the ground for four years. But this year it really took off. None of these we don't do anything for uh, cold protection. It's just it the biology has to make it live. The biology can. If you have a healthy biological system, it can handle temperatures below freezing without killing the trees. <clears throat> I've seen it. I think down to 26 degrees is what they're saying it can take. Anyway, it's like a power grid. It starts shutting down plants. So uh, the most susceptible, the little ones and then they provide energy that they feed back to the other trees, the heat. The, the death creates heat when the biology is with it, or, you know, in the system. So this is our Fuilii, and this tree hasn't flowered yet, but it, I'm thinking this year it's, it's probably gonna flower. I really do. They're pretty trees. They're uh, very, you know, they snap easy and they're easy to chop down. Uh, but and they're important and for our fruit sales, that's, they're good fruit. This one in particular is the one, same one I have it. Uh, maybe it's a different one, but it's close to the one I, I had first planted in Grant where I practiced a lot of organic stuff, but didn't really define our system until moving here. <clears throat> but that one produces fruit and a lot of it. And I guess it's about, I don't know, it must be 10, almost 10 years old now. That's in Grant. They didn't get as cold as we did and they're a lot further north. I don't know. I was a little shocked, the cold. So then we have a Inga Spectabilis, which I got, I bought seeds from, I buy seeds from Fruit Lovers Nursery in Hawaii. I like his seeds, Oscar. Um, a lot of times he may not have the seeds, so he doesn't send them to you. Eventually he sends them to you. Uh, I just have been happy with his seeds. So I continue to buy from fruit lovers nursery for seeds <clears throat> um, and we got Inga Spectabilis which I need to get over there to see this big huge nitrogen fixing well it's not nitrous I, I know that's the bacteria in the archaea but it, it's hard for me not to say uh, I would say nitrogen accumulator is what this tree, what nitrogen fixing trees are. They're like, they build nodes that store nitrogen. They can't 
build the nodes if you're feeding them synthetic nitrogen. Uh, supposedly, not supposedly, there's been studies done, according to Dr. Christine Jones, that you need four different types in the ground along with the biology, and you can fix like 200 pounds of nitrogen. I think that's right, but you'd have to double check to verify. 200 pounds of nitrogen per tree, or per acre, per tree. Or maybe it's hectare, but she's Australian. But um, just a, a huge amount of nitrogen with just four, a four uh, plant cover, uh, orchard floor, cover crop. You don't want the wood chips, you don't want to kill the plants. You want the wood chips, but wood chips are just a feed for the plants, for the biology. They're not meant to be a living system. That's not a living system. That's called wood chips and trees. It's like a monocrop system. Monocrop system. Well, then they put perennial peanut for the orchard floor, and then they have a tree, and then they'll add like lemongrass and a few other things, and they know the Latin names, but it's very, it's not enough. <clears throat> diversity, you need the diversity. So here's our uh, Ingus spectabilis. Ingus spectabilis is sensitive to cold, but this tree didn't get damaged and it looks like it's finally taken off this year. And this one's supposed to be a really good fruit, Ingus spectabilis. And this is from a seed, this is seed grown from from Fruit Lovers Nursery in Hawaii. And uh, it's a pretty tree. I wanna taste the fruit. I will taste the fruit. I'm crossing off the, all these tree fruits off my list of, of uh, fruit I need to taste and try and evaluate. So I have tasted ice cream beans. I've tasted a, a bad one and I, well, it was, I wouldn't plant it. And I play, tasted a good one, which I would plant. So I know that there's ice cream beans that are better than other ice cream beans. And I need to taste them. So there, the talk of nitrogen, when you apply synthetic nitrogen, I guess, you can't form soil aggregation and you can't form symbiotic relationships between the bacteria and archaea in the soil and the tree. Because this tree has excessive amount of nitrogen that it has available, so it doesn't even bond, form a bond with the biology around it in its sociobiome. And the whole key to it is diversity and soil health. Exactly what I've been like raving about, like a lunatic basically. But I just want people to see how easy it is and you don't need to pollute. You don't need to poison your food with pollutants. Pollutants cause chronic disease. It's free too. This is a free, basically a free system because she's saying not to even use manure, cow manure, zebu manure, which I swear by. I don't know if her studies were done on, she's referring to cattle that were not biodyna biodynamically farmed and uh, holistically farmed. And so I'm not sure where the manure source came from, if it was just uh, organic was their standard, which really is not a standard. <clears throat> it needs to be higher than that. That's just my opinion. So then we have one more type of ice cream bean. So all where these little mangoes froze, I've been putting bananas and mulberries and sugar cane in there. Don't need to worry about the nitrogen fixtures. They show up by themselves the clovers, different legumes. And if you have an all legume orchard floor, it, it can't, it doesn't function help 
and like a healthy system. I forget exactly what she said, but I was kind of surprised to hear that even though I knew, I knew it had to be, you had to have a diverse living orchard floor. <clears throat> a living soil is not one plant. You have to have a, a multitude of species to have living soil. Diversity is intelligence when it comes to soil. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we have the last ice cream bean we have is Garcinia cinnamonii. And it's the youngest one. Here's that little uh, Garcinia that I don't know what it is that produces red flowers. It's not a Humbroniana. And um, it's still flowering. I get the, the shell of the flower is red. So when it opens the, the part that's covering the flower petals before it opens, that's red. And then it looks like it has like a, I don't know, it looks tinged with pink on the edges, the flower, but it's a white flower, whitish flower, whitish red. It's, it's white, it's a white flower. I don't know if it's this, the, having the red background from the shell that causes it to look red, but I sure wish it would hold a fruit. Long flower season so far. It's the only one out of all of ours besides Brasiliensis of the Garcinias that's still flowering. So we, this, some jackfruits don't like cold at all and some are fine and fruiting. This particular tree is frozen back a couple times and um, that tree and uh, the cold killed all its like new growth. I mean, it still hasn't snapped out of it. I'm not sure if that's because of the way it was started. But anyway, can't worry about everything. So here's the in Inga cinnamonii, and this definitely is the most cold sensitive tree, Inga tree we have. And I got these seeds from, this tree was a lot taller, it froze like in half. And we have one other tree and it completely died, it looks like. Hopefully it's coming back at the bottom, but I don't believe it is. So that's Inga cinnamonii. Should be a lot bigger this year, I hope. So we can get some variety of Ingas in our tropical fruit we want to sell. Anyway, I just wanted to do a video on our Inga trees and the symbiotic relationship the plants have form with bacteria and archaea to get nitrogen out of the air. Anyway, that's it. Have a good day.